Alright, this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to fix computers, usually the type you find on the side of the road, or maybe the type you find in your basement that uh, doesn't work anymore, or somebody gives to you, or whatnot. Anyways, you find an old computer like such, you don't know if it works or not, well, first thing you usually do, you just give it a quick inspection, make sure nothing's really out of line, everything's really relatively where it should be, plugged into the right spot. Over here this isn't, but I'll get into that. Uh, assuming everything is, plug in the back, turn on the computer, see what happens. If you do not have, at bare minimum, that jump a little tiny bit, and or little indicator lights at the bottom of your motherboard, near the bottom of the case, turn on, when you put power to it, good odds it's this guy. These things fail a lot, and that's your power supply. Uh, they're really easy to change. Uh, it's just four bolts on the back here. Uh, you can take them out with a Phillips head screwdriver, and you unplug them by pulling straight out. The motherboard plugs have a little clip down here. You squeeze that to pull them out. And there's another big motherboard plug usually buried down, it's actually down right there, and you can kind of see that clip too. And uh, if that's what you're thinking it is, there's also another way to test, which is with your wires. You have your black and red, let me sort things out a little better. You have your black and reds here, with your 12 volts, and then your yellow and black there which is your 5 volts now if you're not getting a constant 12 and 5 supply respectively or higher then your power supply is not working properly and it's crapping out or about is crapped out so time to get a new one of these uh, another easy way to tell if the power supply is gone is the fan in the back just reach in with something I can't quite reach it with that, but give it a spin. If the fan spins, it's a lot more likely to work. Um, the ones that the fan is not spinning, it's probably dead. Okay, now, assuming the computer does not start, and you're in a non-start computer, everybody would think it was bad. Now, what would make it bad? Well, there's many things that can make it bad. On a prone of first inspection, you look at the capacitors, which are these little cylinder-looking things. And they're scattered throughout the board, mostly around the processor, which is this guy under here. There are a few down here. But usually these types with the X's on them, if they are swollen or leaking, that means you have a bad motherboard. And... You can replace these caps. You can actually, if you get another one, the right value, you can solder a new one in. Usually you solder all of the type that are bad. You replace all of them, and that will fix your problem. Now, assuming your caps are good, uh, my first step is I disconnect everything. I disconnect my disk drives, my CD, DVD, actually has a floppy, I disconnect with that, and my hard drive. I disconnect both power and the IDE cables, both of these. So there is no, no peripheral, peripherals on, on there, and then down here. Um, I'm not going to take the time to unscrew this, but you pull out all your cards, and even if you can, your video cards, and plug in your but if there is, if you can, if there is only a video card and that's your only video, you're gonna have to leave that unplugged or plugged in rather. You also will want to unplug your RAM, which is this guy right here, right beside your processor, which will always be the big heat sink in the middle, usually with a fan on top. You'll find your RAM. It's gonna have these little triggers down here. 
on the bottom and more on the top. You put, push those in and then push everything out of the way and out comes your ram chips which look like this. These also can go bad quite often. I've seen more than one brand new or fairly new out of the box uh, go bad and you'll chase it around replacing things like your power supply your hard drive, your video card if the computer had one and it actually turns out to be bad RAM best test for RAM is memtest.exe uh, it's a very small and easy program it usually determines if RAM is bad within about 30 seconds I know it has any time I've done it now okay you pulled up going back to diagnosing your computer you've pulled out everything your power supply is only connected to your motherboard there are no cards unless you have to have your video card there's no drives connected now first thing you want to do you can try to power your computer on but all it's going to do is beep if it does if you do try it and it doesn't even beep odds are not looking good that it's even going to turn on you take a RAM chip one of your RAM chips you put it back in to where it's supposed to go you want to put it closest to the processor and click it into place properly now then you try and you turn it on if it does not turn on you pull this RAM chip out you grab another RAM chip and you put that one in now let's say you only have two and neither of them worked well if it is in the first slot try the second slot and if they're different colored slots definitely try the other colored slot because some motherboards one side or the other will die but more often than not you'll find if it is bad RAM that when you're plugging one in and the other in all of a sudden the computer will screw up or not turn on at all now assuming you put the RAM in then all the RAM is in place properly where it should be and it still does not work okay or it's, it is working sorry then next thing you want to try is your hard drive so you plug your hard, hard drive back in now this is an older IDE if it was a SATA drive it would be much easier to do that with um, but you plug your drive back in try your computer again if your computer still starts then you start plugging, well you could plug in your disk drive or DVD-ROM or CD-ROM, but usually they're not the cause. Sometimes they are, but very rarely. But then, last, you want to start plugging your cards in. And you may find that one of your cards is actually shorted out or something. I've had that happen. And uh, I actually had a, a power supply connect, or power end here go down and it swung down like that and it touched two little solder points like these and big blue spark and uh, luckily it only fried a uh, network card at the time but uh, learned that you got to keep an eye on your power cables and make them keep them tucked out of the way I didn't notice I hope I wasn't blocking too much of that shot anyways so now if your computer still does not run after trying all these things most likely you're either got a bat if you haven't tried changing your power supply and you can try another power supply but otherwise if your power supply is checking out good and you, you know everything else seems to be good it could be your motherboard they do go um, but most likely it's going to be either this guy, your power supply, your hard drive, or your RAM. One of these three. The odd time, again, it'll be your board, but if it is your board, usually you can tell by swollen caps or leaking caps. Now I hope this has been informative. Um, I just wanted everybody to know and give them an opportunity to see what I do now I find it really easy myself but if I can do it I mean look at me I'm a crazy hillbilly I got this huge beard and everything and I have no problem doing this stuff um, 
It's actually almost second nature to me now. I've been doing it for quite a while. I taught it all to myself. I just figured it all out as I went for the most part. Um, but I've been doing it for a while. And I do it quite frequently. i got another computer here. I'm actually just loading an operating system on. I have monitors here that I'm fixing. They're fixed. I have a 32-inch LCD TV. I found it in the garbage. And uh, <laughs> it works. Uh, it will need minor work at some point, but it works good enough for me. And I also have over here, I have a pile of laptops and other old computer parts that I've just gathered recently. Um, even my laptop and such, my laptop has no screen. And uh, the 19 inch monitor that I have, I fixed myself, I picked out of the garbage. So, you can have, you know, my, my laptop was three months old when I bought it. It was a $500 laptop. I bought it for $100 because the screen was broke. So, you can get good deals on stuff and even free stuff that, you know, can get you by. Um, but, yeah, hopefully this has given you guys some insight. And anybody that's interested in fixing computers or fixing their own computers, hopefully this has given you some confidence to jump into your own machine. They're pretty simple. They're almost all laid out the same. Your processor is going to be up close to your power supply. Power supply is always up there. Well, there are some funky desktops that are a little different, but still most of the same. You're always going to have your slots there for your cards, and your RAM is almost always to the right of your processor. And, it, like I said, that can vary how many you have, but that's not a big deal. Anyways, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, etc., please feel free to comment, rate, or subscribe, and uh, I will get back to you as soon as possible if with you have any questions, and uh, hopefully uh, one of these days soon I'll get a newer computer and I'll do a newer one like this with the more modern computer. <laughs> Alright, everybody.